tous, euh, je suis ravie d'être là euh, aujourd'hui. Et donc, euh, moi aujourd'hui, je vais euh, vous parler d'une So in charge of advocacy in this series. Hello, I'm happy to be here today. I'm going to tell you about innovation. This is a recipe for success. I know there are young people in the room. This is not the mystery ingredient for Coca-Cola. Many people are still looking for. At the heart of the innovation I'm going to uh, present to you uh, today is something you're not necessarily expecting, but it's uh, the recipe of the Apple brand. L'innovation que je vais vous présenter nothing si uh, you heard about already no this is not a, necessarily what you're expecting it's a, not an innovation it's it's three innovations uh, in uh, one the first one is fairly simple you uh, uh, tape uh, you register in Ireland all the benefits and sales uh, done in Europe. The second one consists in paying uh, uh, research um, fees uh, to your uh, uh, parent company in the United States. The third one is my favorite, is the cherry on the cake. It's an agreement with the Irish administration so that uh, you will shift the remaining benefits towards a, a, a fictitious, an empty shell with no worker, no roof, no law, and no taxes above all. I think you see what I'm aiming at. Uh, the result is a tax rate of 0.005%, which means in practical terms that for each million benefits, only 50 euro taxes are paid. Anybody has got a, a better formula? This has made the Apple Brown the first among the uh, richest uh, companies in the world. It's a sort of a holdup, actually. A theft without arms, an international theft which we uh, all suffer from. And this is not the only story of this kind I could tell you today. Because if um, I use the, uh, the English pun, it's not a few bad apples. I could tell you about these thousands of companies that are uh, doing their best to uh, create uh, tax gimmicks with intermediaries, uh, tax specialized uh, uh, lawyers who use their image in imagination and creativity to try and be as opaque as possible and as efficient as possible to pay as little tax as possible. It's like a, a, a contest, an international contest on how to pay less taxes. And there are a number of uh, applicants. I'm sure you heard about the last uh, scandals, Panama Papers, but there have been a number of them before, LuxLeaks, Amazon, Google. There's a huge list, and it's going to get longer. And every time there's such a scandal, there is the same frenzy in the media. Journalists uh, talk about this, call us NGOs, and every time they are surprised. The word discovers what it already knows. The word discovers that the richest, the huge companies, uh, they try and pay as little tax as they can. And uh, every time when I'm called on to talk on television or on the radio, I must, how is this still possible? Because they, you know, they remember the last statement, this is the end of tax haven, or yes, we are going to put an end to such a scandal, to the era of fiscal fraud and fiscal evasion. Well, here's my scoop for you today. There are and there will be many more scandals. So how is it still possible? How can a company, without being punished, violate the rules and steal from the states, steal billions and tens of billions sometimes by not paying taxes? How can a big company still 
play with the different regulation in different countries. I'll give you some ideas to understand the answer. In my uh, uh, activity, I meet CSR uh, managers and company managers. When I tell them about the level of tax they pay, they have the same reaction. First of all, they tell you it's technical and complex, and NGOs such as ours do not necessarily have the capacities to understand the intricacies of the uh, decision, tax decisions of a company that uh, it is too difficult for us, it is not uh, our business and that we don't care. Oh, is it so? So you don't care? We don't care that companies are playing with tax rules in order to pay as little tax as possible? Companies say it's complex. Uh, I'm puzzled, honestly. We know the result. The second reaction, particularly when they have been caught red-handed uh, with a very low rate of uh, tax taxation, is that saying that it's legal? They are right. When you're a multinational, you have the right to artificially transfer your benefits from one country to the other. You have the right to consider your subsidiaries like independent entities and to play that game and try and find the most uh, uh, the, the best rate for you. Because. Uh, uh, companies practice innovation, but so do states. And there are states that always try to find the best possibilities for uh, to attract multinationals in order to have more uh, companies. And then you have tax rulings, the double ice sandwich, the patent boxes, you know, this technical. Uh, uh, talk, uh, maybe uh, I've lost you here, but this is what uh, is offered to companies. Um, it's much, very much like when you're at your uh, local supermarket choosing among several brands of yogurts. Well, the companies, they do that with the countries. They are going to choose between Ireland, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, the place where they have the best uh, tax bargain. But this is not as when you choose your yogurt. It has an impact on our society. To get back to the apple earlier on, the company was caught up by the uh, uh, European community that demanded from Ireland that it gets back the 13 billion it should have been should have, that should have been paid by Apple to the Irish state. But the ironic thing here is that Ireland doesn't want this money, 13 billion euros. It's peanuts, isn't it? It's only one fourth of the national Irish budget. They can do without it. This is a very telling story. 13 billion euros. Do you imagine what you could do with 13 billion euros? You could double up the uh, health budget in Ireland, multiply by three. They uh, plan to build. Uh, uh, economic housing, you could buy 2.6 uh, billion Guinness, 60 pint for each European citizen. Isn't that cool? And this is what they lose with only one company. In such a situation, there are two solutions, two options for the uh, for the states. First of all, to get the citizen to pay instead of the company, just like if you go to the restaurant and your neighbor leaves without paying and you're asked to pay for him. The second possibility is to cut public spending, to cut essential services, those the services that are indispensable to reduce inequality. The result is that inequalities are on the rise. They're exploding. The 1% richest people on the planet have more than the 99% of the poorest people on the planet. You remember my story with the Apple in the beginning and innovation. When I was telling you that this innovation was going to change our daily life, we didn't necessarily think about this type of change. However, what would the Silicon Valley brain be without hospitals to keep them in a good health, 
without the schools to train them, without the infrastructures to make uh, their transportation possible. We all need public services, even the major companies. So when we find ourselves in such a situation, well, we are depressed. You're going to ask me what we can do. Just uh, keep quiet here and that's it. No, I have good news for you. The good news is that there's something we can do about this. Is this the result of political will? And uh, in the very same way, we can invert the trend. We can reverse the trend. And we at Oxfam analyze these type of problems. We suggest alternatives to recreate a positive economy that correspond to the reality of economic exchanges and not to the fallacy of, of tax uh, uh, fraud and tax evasion or tax avoidance. We analyze, we understand, we denounce. This is our job. Our job is to raise awareness, to inform, to influence us so that the rules of the game will be changed. My friends will talk about lobbying, but uh, I will talk about making the case for transparency and, and general interest. But our work would be nothing without you. It would be nothing without the power of citizens. So in order to uh, mobilize, uh, don't worry, you don't need to understand the intricacy of uh, tax avoidance or be able to count the number of Guinness uh, beers you could uh, uh, gain from getting back the money of, of, of tax uh, avoidance. No, you need to join this movement of citizens to seek information, to convey our analysis, to uh, share our articles, our reports, our conclusions, to sign our petition. Sometimes a single tweet can make a difference. For example, we launched a mobilization during the Sapin too low uh, lately. Tens of thousands of people sent a tweet to their MP saying, I'm a citizen. This is of relevance to me. I would like you to regulate tax avoidance that you impose transparency to major multinationals because that's what's at stake uh, today. That's what's important today. Now uh, the ball got ro rolling, and I hope that uh, next time somebody from Oxfam will come and tell you about fiscal tax avoidance here. It will not be to present the last innovation of the Apple brand. It will not be in order to tell you about the last uh, uh, creativity in tax avoidance matters, but rather to tell you how we managed, managed to put an end to the era of tax haven, how we managed to combat inequalities. How, and believe me, I think that would be a fantastic revolution. Thank you.